Hello everyone! I have played the Division 2 beta, both the regular and the endgame content. I don't feel like I am qualified to talk about how I feel about the Division 2 beta, and here's why. As some of you may know, I played the Division for the first two or three months of its release. At release, it was not very good. One might say it was bad. And I never engaged with the game ever again, until the Division 2 beta. Eventually, the game became good with patch 1.8, and a lot of people enjoy the game now. My problem is that I don't know what happened to this game, but I still think it would be an interesting viewpoint to make a video as someone who doesn't know anything about the game, as someone who might just be any other person out there who disengaged from the division, heard it got good, and might now be interested. My experience with the Division 2 beta was the following. It feels like I'm playing the Division. That was my takeaway, for the most part. That's not a bad thing. It's not like they're gonna reinvent the wheel over here. Gameplay's gonna feel the same, the RPG stuff's gonna feel the same, that's fine. As I'll mention in the following conversation, I think I'm just fatigued from all of these beta experiences and these looter shooter RPGs. I don't need to play a demo because the thing that I care about is the end game, which is typically something we don't really get to dive into until many hours into the game. That being said, I enjoyed the difficulty of the end game mission on hard mode that was available, but slogging through early game content in an RPG like this or even Anthem or anything like that is not something I really want to engage a ton with because it's not where I'm going to be spending most of my time. I've recorded a mini podcast with some of my friends who have been quite invested into The Division the entire time it has been out. They've played Patch 1.8 and beyond, they've played before 1.8, they've played the game very recently in preparation for Division 2, and I wanted to get their takes on how they felt, because they're a little more qualified. One thing that we do not mention is the 8-man raid stuff, which is a rather big thing about Division 2, 8-man raids. But this conversation was more focused on the beta experience and the changes going from Division 1 into Division 2. Hope you guys enjoy. Uh, Char, let's start with you. Your impressions of the beta. Go. Alright, um, so I played the beta a few hours the first day and the second day. First day, a little rocky. Everyone knows there was a bunch of connection issues. Right. But there was, a, there was an update. Uh, before the second day that fixed all of that so after that patch the game ran great there were no connection problems and it was it was a game it was playable it was great it feels a lot like the division uh, I, I mean that in the best way possible because it's a direct sequel it feels like the game it plays the same way there's a little bit of tweaks and changes but for the most part I feel like they are all improvements. The first thing that comes to mind is that there aren't consumables anymore. Uh, instead, ammunition such as like shock ammo. shock ammo. Yeah, like the shock ammo and stuff all applies to your weapons automatically, which I think is great. Um, I would often forget to use them entirely. So now it's nice that I just pick it up and I use it and it's great. I think the new specialist weapons are really cool. The 50 cal sniper was by far my favorite of the three. I think that maybe the crossbow could use a little bit of love, but they were all fun to use, even if they weren't all super strong. Yeah, so that is one thing, one significant thing that I noticed is that signature abilities are just gone now, and they've been replaced by signature weapons, I guess. Um, yeah. From what I've heard, that signature abilities kind of caused a lot of issues. I guess they were just like really, really good, or it could be abused or something like that. Any, any info on that? Well, the problem was they were such good trump cards that whenever you had an engagement in the dark zone it, it was whoever had the signature ability won or if you were playing pve you could almost trivialize certain parts of uh specific activities just by using a signature ability whether it made you basically impervious to bullets or you killed everything that you looked at gotcha okay uh fitzy let's go to you uh what got better what got worse? What stayed the same? Um, I I don't know. Like in terms of like getting better, it, it to me like it still feels pretty much like Division One to me. The graphics overall uh, between one and two are night and day. They definitely seem to uh, improve on that. 
some of the gameplay is still kind of there's still a lot of bugs uh, that you can notice with the enemies here and there let's say like they're suppressed and you go up to them and you're just gonna start shooting at them they're shooting but you don't know who they're shooting at <laughs> mm -hmm. and it's definitely still a little bit buggy but I don't know I think it's I don't I don't know like what got it's like it's it's a continuation, you know, basically. Yeah, it's a continuation. Like, it's some stuff. I mean, granted, it's a beta. We don't really have all the end, like the end game weapons or anything. Like, we don't have perfect builds or anything right now. So they're not like System. bullet spongy. Like some of the yellows aren't like quite as bullet spongy as they were in Division One. It, it definitely yeah, I, just I, feels I, like. Yeah, good. Yeah, I, re I no, I just say I remember things in Division One being very very spongy right um it, it's not as bad at least based on like the the end game mission that we played uh today or over the weekend um right. where these giant yellow health bar enemies you can hit certain weak points on them now and if you break that armor off they go down super super quick um things are, are still a little spongy but they kind of have to be given the nature of the game like it's still an rpg it's not mm -hmm. it's it's a shooter, but it's treated as an RPG. It's, you know, instead of a sword, it's a gun in your hand, right? Yeah, it, it definitely, it's not like, <clears throat> I wouldn't say they're as bullet spongy as before, but they definitely seem to use their, their abilities way more than what they did in Division One, at least to me. Um, but the abilities of the enemies, you know, the grenade launchers being... I think they're a little bit slightly overpowered. They can probably turn them down a little bit. They feel strong. Uh, <laughs> they feel strong. The, uh, a little at, at strong. Least in that if, if, yeah. If you remember, because you were pretty, you know, you played Division One on the early stages. Very early. Uh, yeah. Okay, Lexington, Lexington Event Center, the shotgun rushers. Oh yeah, God. Yeah, yeah that, those that, were yeah awful, awful. Yeah. So like their abilities in Division Two with the grenade launcher would be similar to what shotguns were like in the early stage but okay now i mean i i have a i have a quick question um when we were playing through that mission on hard mode i i noticed that like the the medics would actually go around resing people and then there was dudes fixing the little robots that were turrets and just c completely completely insane in terms of their damage output was there a lot of that in division one like uh, like around now you know within the last year or so because i actually really like that the enemy AI actually has roles, and not only do they have roles, they actually go around doing those roles. If you don't take care of the healer, they're gonna res the enemy, which I think is actually kind of cool. Was that part of Division One? As far as the medics go, if you were to start damaging their box, that would be they'd probably rush rush out and repair it. You had engineers in Division One. Uh, if you start damaging the turret, they'd go over to it, start to repair it. Um, you know, as far as like medics resing, uh, no, that's brand new to the game. Uh, I was actually surprised to see that. That kind of threw me off a little bit. So, but if from if you played Division One, your main focus always was to go after the medic because their station was very strong and mm -hmm. it would sometimes outheal your DPS sometimes. So, gotcha. It was definitely a nice change. That's for sure. Added a nice little. Uh, well, it, it made you prioritize certain targets, right? Like, you could right. prioritize it, it a bunch of the red dudes that go down easily, but the medic was pretty tough to kill. But if you didn't kill the medic, those red dudes would just keep coming back. But then you also right. want to kill the grenade guys because they're putting tons of damage on you. And then you also want to kill the turret guys because the turrets are really annoying. So it creates yeah, the this, controllers. like... Yeah, it, it creates this kind of interesting... Uh, gameplay where you have to figure out what targets to prioritize and I actually like that instead of just killing just waves and waves of dudes that just you know just spawn from doorways and don't really do anything interesting other than just yeah, you know shoot you it's definitely uh, a battle of abilities for sure <laughs> yeah Jin um, I want to get you in because you have not gotten to say anything um, do you feel like this is basically just like a continuation of Des or a Destiny One Division Division One like 1.8? Do you kind of feel like they're just kind of building off of that and 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 just progressing forward, um, sort of like how Destiny Two was maybe supposed to do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, one of the things that uh, for me that is greatly improved is uh, the exploration. So, for example, when, when Fitzy and I were, were off on our own and we found that chainsaw boss, I thought that was, like, 
we were just going in this random tunnel and then all of a sudden we ran into this chainsaw boss that was there was nothing really like there was uh there was bosses around the map but this guy was just uh he's pretty unique and there's always like stuff to pick up on the you know like materials and stuff like that um a lot of the the dz stuff the nice the changes the normalized dz um i find that uh, a little bit refreshing as well um because it was always kind of annoying in division one to run into guys who were really tanky or putting out a lot of dps or um it became kind of you know who had the the best build rather than about like gun uh gunplay and like you were playing rock paper scissors basically yeah pretty much okay like you could run into somebody who didn't have a gear set but if you ran into somebody who who did who did have a gear set they could take down your entire team and it, and it didn't seem like when i was playing in the dz it didn't really seem like you had that what it, some of the other stuff that i really like is the brand set bonuses a lot of your lower level gear is actually more useful as opposed to being like constantly discarded as as you level up uh the ability to direct your skills so you can select targets for your turret your secret mines um i found that really good as well um and then one thing that's uh greatly improved is the blueprints that you get so they scale with your character now as opposed to um being at a set level in the, in the first game if you want to get better mods or stuff like that that's really good they've made some really good improvements there yeah mm -hmm. Would would you say Jin, and I'm sure Char and maybe Dado, I don't know if you, I, I don't know if you were really paid attention to the UI, uh, you know, guys. What like, I feel the UI in Division Two, uh, I like versus Division One. I, I think it's kind of more blocky and just kind of, it doesn't feel clean to me. It, it just. How do you feel about that, Char? Uh, so the UI looks gorgeous. And I feel like it was designed to be very aesthetically pleasing. The floating UI that follows you around while you're playing the game looks great. And if you understand how it works, functionally, it's pretty good too. The menuing, when you bring up your menu and you're going through your inventory, is a mess. Yeah. It's there's a lot of There's a lot of extra clicks, I feel like, that you need to do in order to make things happen. Like yeah, uh, I agree. even even just turning the the end game mission that we got to play to hard mode, I loaded up the menu, as I clicked on hard and then I exited the menu. I did not know I had to confirm to turn the thing into hard mode. So we started playing like four minutes in, and I was like, "This is really easy. Are we sure we're on hard mode?" And I went back and checked; it was still on normal because I didn't like double click or confirm it. And I feel like there's a lot of extra clicks and confirmations you have to go through uh, in order to do certain things. Yeah, I agree. I think that there's um, there's a lot of different clicks you have to go through if you want to equip something, if you want to mod something. The mod menu in particular, I don't know if this was just a beta thing or if I was doing it wrong, but I would open up my mod menu and there was a button that said all mods. So I would click on that to try and change the mods, but you couldn't actually change anything from that menu. I would then have to click on not the mod itself individually, but a tiny little square on my gun to then bring up an individual slot menu, then find the mod I want, click on it, confirm that that's the mod that I actually want to equip, then back out, repeat for every single mod on each weapon that I wanted to change. You lost me I don't know if I through. I'll be yeah. honest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we're about 15 minutes in. I don't want to get this video over 20 minutes, so I'll, I'll pose one of my final questions to you guys. What about Division 2? is going to entice me, someone who played Division 1 way back in the day and stopped playing, to play Division 2. Because to me, what I played was more of the same. And I feel like I personally am getting some fatigue from looter shooter RPGs. I'm already playing Destiny a lot. I plan on covering Anthem, which is an, uh, yet another uh, RPG looter shooter. And now Division's coming in a month later, another RPG shooter what's what's is there something that is there to grab me and pull me in to be like you need to be playing this game um like you need to make this your game or at least a game that you want to try to engage with um is there that pull factor or is this mainly just hey if you like playing division one you're probably gonna like playing division two but if you didn't really get invested maybe you're gonna continue to not get invested 
so for me, uh, I played Division 1 at the very beginning, didn't play for a long time, and then came back at 1.8. And there were two things to me that I really liked about Division 1 that I'm seeing in Division 2 that would grab me as a new player. One of the things that I really liked, which had nothing to do with the gameplay or anything, was the world that Massive had built. Um, as someone who lives in New York, it was really cool to see how lifelike New York was in the Division 1. And Washington, D.C. is, you know, recreating something that's real. It's the world we live in. And it's really cool to be able to go to all these points of interest inside our actual world. This isn't, you know, a fantasy made a planet far, far away. This is America. Um, so it's something that I can personally relate to, and obviously that's not going to be the truth for everybody, but for me it was cool to have something that was more real world. Um, the other thing for me was that I really like investing into a single character in an RPG. It's why I've been playing these kinds of games for years, it's why I played MMOs for years, and a lot of people would come to me and be like, is it too late to play The Division 1? Should I just play Division 2? It is a fresh start where everyone is lining up on the starting line and you can go out and you can heavily invest and you can make something that's uniquely to you that'll be your build your gear set and i feel like if that's something you enjoy if you like the idea of heavily investing and then being able to look at your character and be like this is uniquely mine then you will enjoy the division two because there's a lot of that deep dirty nitty gritty min maxing unique character build and customization to it there there are a lot of stats for sure like even just looking at some of those you know menus i was like oh my goodness like there's a lot um yeah with, with anthem coming up it it's i think it's gonna be a tough call for a lot of people i will always always say to people play where your friends are if your friends are playing anthem play anthem if your friends are playing division play division but i think coming down to just playing which one should I play I you know I get this question all the time what should I invest my money into division anthem destiny warframe whatever it is right I th there's there's no real way of of telling you what you should or should not invest into because I don't know what you like right it all depends on what you like anthem's going for something a little more different they're going for more ability based kind of high octane uh, action combat, whereas Division is a lot more tactical, especially Division 2. I rem like this feels way more tactical than Division 1 felt, where Division 1 it felt like you know you could you had a little more freedom in running out and shooting some guys. Mm -hmm. They really feel like this is much more tactical um, than, than the first one. Um, so, yeah, ultimately, like I didn't have any negative impressions of the Division 2's beta at all. I just, to me, someone who hadn't played in three years, I was, I, I, I don't know the ins and outs. I don't know the, you know, what's changed, what hasn't changed. It just still felt like division to me. And that's something I worry about for people who may have started playing division one, didn't get to know the ins and outs of division two, maybe might pick it up for a couple of hours and be like, eh, feels like division one. I'm just going to return it. Um, I'm not asking you guys to like, you know, try to sell the game for me or anything, but you know, people always want to know, is it worth investing my money into? And I think that, at least as of right now, based on what I've heard and what I've seen, if you play Division 1, there's no reason that you shouldn't get Division 2, right? Would you guys agree mm -hmm. with that? Yeah, if yeah. you like yeah. Division 1, you'll <coughs> love Division 2. Um, if you didn't like Division 1 at the very beginning, it's now a very different game because they had years of feedback and changing the game. And my initial impression from the beta is that they listened to all of that feedback and they're you know really investing and in doubling down on the rpg aspect of the game so if that sounds like something you're into then i would say it's worth it if you're maybe you don't want to you know spend hours trying to learn a game and having to know all the ins and outs you just want to go in and play a game and that be the end of it then maybe it isn't for you you know if, if you uh, stuck with division one through and through all the updates, you know, 1.2, it was terrible, you know, 1.3, 1. 1.0, you know, and so forth. If you stuck through it through and through, you're going to like Division 2 uh, because, you know, they, it seems like they built off of 1.8 and they, you know, changed a couple of things. They more and more of like a tactical, they want you to, it seems like, utilize cover shooting a little bit more. 
Um, Weird in a cover shooter. Who yeah, I know, that? right? Before, like, before you can't just run a gun anymore. Um, if you're a new player, you're still on the fence about the game. Yeah, it's kind of like me with Anthem. I'm just gonna, you know, it's it's okay to sit back and wait. Wait, wait for reviews. Just wait. Wait for There's just wait for reviews. If, you, if you're not, if yeah. you don't want to invest your time into a game that's an RPG and, and you know, it's like you're kind of on the fence. It's okay to be on the fence. I mean, it's plenty of other games out there, um, but you know, Massive has done a fantastic job in listening to community feedback for a very long time, and it definitely shows. Uh, so I, th I think they're going to come out of the gate swinging uh, big time. And I don't think it's going to fall flat on its face like Division 1 launch did. So, All right. Jin, uh, any Jin. closing, uh, closing yeah, remarks? I, I think really um, what turned a lot of people off from Division 1 was the, the initial grind. And what I think they've done from the 1 to 30 grind specifically, it was really, okay, you would do missions. And then you would do side missions or um, medical or security. Um, you would do these other side missions. And there was really like five five missions that were cut and paste ac across the map. Um, when I did the side missions in Division 2, um, they're a little bit more engaging. And I find there's like little tidbits of the story. I found it was a little bit better in, in terms of getting that getting you uh into the game and into the story world a little bit more people said that the initial grind for division one was was really boring from one to 30. um it looks like they've changed that so i really think if you're look if you're coming in as a new player you'll find that uh, more engaging and then the fact that you can have the brand sets you know you can be kind of like a powerful uh agent right off the bat as opposed to um, you have to grind 1 to 30, okay, now you need to get, you know, your gear score up, and then finally you can go to gear sets, uh, but then if you don't, then you have to go to classified gear sets. I found that progression uh, for new players in Division 1 kind of, it was a lot of, a lot of effort. It looks like here they've kind of made it a little bit easier to become more powerful, and I think that'll be a lot more rewarding for new players. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you guys very much for joining me. I will splash all of your information on the screen now. Thank you, everybody else, for watching. I want to know your guys' opinion of the Division 2 beta as well, how you guys are feeling about Division 2, because I really was not planning on doing any content, uh, at least YouTube content on it. You know, I'm, I may stream it on release day and and you know we'll go for a little while and see how it is but i really wasn't planning on anything unless it really 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 hooked me so uh let me know how you guys are feeling about it thanks for listening and i will see you guys next time